start my presentation. As I can see, the audience are all Chinese, so I will uh, give the presentation in English. And of course, my English is much better than the um, English. First of all, good morning and welcome to uh, attend this session. And I will share some the coordination and the management of the system in Jindal. I prepared the presentation and I have attended many sessions of this Kubicon conference. And many of you will learn the name of the company. But maybe some foreigners may not know the Kubicon company, so I will uh, give the brief introduction to, uh, to, to the company. As you all familiar with the so I will just skip that. But for the contemporization of the uh, system in Jingdong, actually we started quite early in 2005. In 2016, when the kidney became open, open source, so I will just return that to the Kubernetes, so maybe we are the first uh, user of practitioners uh, to practice in Kubernetes. And for now, we have already performed the consideration for the state and non-state applications. And I'd like to clarify that uh, I only I'm only responsible for the internal uh, transaction data, including the IT and the business and other department. And the data is quite huge. But one of the challenges is the database. Since they have different states, and first we need to do a continuation of that. As you all know, the stability is quite important for the system. However, to practice, we have another open source project called the Vitas. It has a new SQL approach to offer the dynamic uh, span uh, like the uh, splitting and merging so that we can have the dynamic monitoring of the system. That is the foundation of the continuation uh, so we can have the flexible management of the resource and we can offer the uh, very basic mechanism and we have a very new approach. Well, for one of the major changes actually appeared after the continuation, it lies in the resource management, such as other services and microservices, online services. So, how much resources should we allocate to that? Because the database has different states, and it's not difficult, it's not easy to adjust to that. And many systems are rely on the database, the database, so it's quite difficult to manage that. And we have a high demand and a dynamic demand. So another challenge may be the online service and non-state application will most focus on the CPU and the memory. But for the database, we want to have a long-term storage room, so the disk or the disk room has to, to be managed. Besides, we want to have uh, pay more attention to I/O bandwidth, which is uh, automatic. And for the last but not least, the state for application uh, it has a quite uh, huge amounts of data and with huge cost. So that becomes another challenge. And this is the actual situation in the data. So we have another approach. We first need to understand the workload. And this instance is distracted from the actual system. That is a seven database systems and six over six uh, hundred containers. Well, from the pictures on the right hand, it shows the CPU utilization distribution of the different containers. And for the P19, P15, and about the new value, and we can see the overall the distribution of that. For the dynamic workload, the basic of that is the maximum value must to be much higher than the if limiting value or the mean value if we want to optimize the system. 
we have to find a, a, an appropriate approach where a classic approach we selected in 1990 value. Since the difference of the P90 value uh, is not that huge, but that of the P80 value. But for P90 value, it's much more uh, classic. And what if the remaining 10 to come to the maximum value? So here comes to the resource management. For the first, we need to solve the the sign in, we want to give the right sign in for the container or the database. At first, we need to have a knowledge or awareness of that. Previously, in, uh, in, uh, pra in practical practices, we may say that uh, about 80% will be too much, we do not need that much uh, resources. But for now, we have a basic approach. When we start a new business, we can majority from the map data like this business type and we can have a business uh, profile and draw some characteristics of that after it took a long time and we can draw some conclusions according to the historical st uh, data statistics and the, uh, prediction and then we can struggle uh, struggling it to different uh, hosts we also want to take consideration of the affinity and stability. And when we consider the container, we cannot only allow the resources for the P90 value. How would happen if the remaining 10% appeared? So if you are quite familiar with the Kubernetes and container, we have two parameters. One is request. It needs to guarantee the resources must be allocated to each job. For so now, most uh, uh, optimization focuses on the request for this parameter. This is the maximum value of the lowest. Uh, the lowest value. Well, for the basic idea or concept of that, you can see the picture, uh, picture on the right side. For the blue part, this is this just allocated the resource according to the historical data statistics and prediction. We take the 90% value as a And then we have the continental limit, that is a maximum utilization value. We can set the maximum value. This part is not, uh, cannot be guaranteed if the competition happens. And we have another innovation in that. If we simply just schedule the realm or the resources of the physical service, or for the classic Kubernetes allocating, it only to allocate the blue part, the sub part of that will not limit the capacity of the container. It is also the guarantee to ensure that everyone or every job can have the resources. And when we do that, in practice we find two hypotheses. First, not all the requested resources will not be used. And for the second, the maximum value requested by each job will not be achieved at the same time. Just like the flight ticket booking, we may uh, book to the ticket, but not all the ticket will be, uh, will be used. And if we sum, do the sum of the maximum value of each job for the CPU capacity, it may be over the three times the CPU capacity of the container. So this is a basic concept that we need to guarantee the part, the part, but this is not the big problem. And we will also give improvement to the different, uh, the different jobs. And it is called the shared headroom for the physical servers. It can be shared on physical servers, and we just assume that it will not reach the peak now. And as you can uh, see the volume, uh, the volume shown on the slide, the headroom, will not just uh, over the limit. It will guarantee 
The missing resources can be allocated to each job in Welfare, and we can leave some flexible, uh, flexible parts which can be shared with each job for the scheduling. And we just uh, increase uh, the cumulative. Well, if we do this on the blue part, the, uh, the value will not limit, it will not over the limit of the capacity. Since we have made some room to do flexible management, since the resource scheduling is up to me, the main approach for resource management, if we take a much more aggressive approach, the performance may not be there. So how can we guarantee? And how can you calculate this specific room? This part. Actually, we will see. They will not achieve the peak value at the same time. But we can show. But we can see the picture on the right side of the slide. This is a correlation analysis, and it contains 60 containers. And from this picture, we can see the correlation between 60 containers. And the dark the color. And the top is the correlation between these two containers. So if the, the color is not that dark, they are quite light, they show the continuity. So they don't have to uh, involve them in each other. So we can see the affinity. And this is a very simple way to estimate the correlation. And this is the formula considered for which cost we can have non continuous if these containers are strongly correlated to each other. And we can definitely say that they may achieve the value at the same time. So we'll give certain resources to that and we'll leave some remaining capacity. Well, for those parts not strongly correlated with the part, we will not sum each one for each two or each seven. We will not calculate them together. Since this is a maximum value, that is to say each one to each four, obviously it will be smaller uh, than the value of each one to each nine. So theoretically, the maximum on sum must be lower than the sum of the maximum. Because first, not all the resources will be used, and the second, not all jobs will reach the peak value at the same time. This is a very that this is a fancy line that comes from the practice. And for the fixed uh, algorithm, actually, in the state of the art, I don't want to waste any resources. I think that 90 percent value is quite good. If you want uh, a 5 CPU at the maximum, we'll give you a 4.5 uh, CPU. And here, I will just uh, I'll take the baseline as a 99 percent value. If you want to do the 99% value at the baseline, we can have uh, we show uh, we can find that it will be allocated with much more resources than that of the 90%. Uh, if we have our uh, remaining resources, we'll just take that and to go control the share of the value. And I'm feeling that much more than the, 90, the value of 90 percent value. And the remaining 10 percent will have some problems. This is the resource allocation for the lower of this value. The main value will be lower. And for the critical part of that, we do the container management. We have a basic requirement uh, condition. Is to meet the performance. And this slide shows the performance or problems may occur. And we define this as a quality of service violation. If resources are not sufficient, we will have some problems. 
the value is about 90 percent. And correlation may reach to to six or seven percent. Now, if I put the well, basically, allocated resources according to the maximum request. And this shows that this is the same way. The resource allocation. And so the size of the database will just be a more basic approach. One thing that I want to mention is you can adjust it according to your requirements. For example, if you need it to be higher or if you need it to be 95% so that you can see it is quite elastic and flexible. And another point to make is this actually this is already been proved and for the current data. For example, the proportion 1 to 2 or 1 to 4. So the first we can save some resources because this is quite conservative or sometimes if it is quite aggressive then it will be problems in its performance. So on the one hand we need to save resource, uh, resources but on the other hand we also need to guarantee the performance. But occasionally sometimes uh, there will be a, a gap, but th this is just occasionally. And the second aspect to mention is how to manage our database. First is we need to give it a right sizing. And the, another point to make is I want to emphasize this is not just one time because it is a cycle, a life cycle and it is not real time. So it is a life cycle and we will observe its changes. If we find that uh, there is an incremental trend, we will adjust it uh, about its limit and its request. So after the adjustment, first maybe uh, on our local host, and we have some practices in Jingdong. Uh, for example, it's CPU memory or its request, and we do not need to restart its container because for some versions it needs to be restarted. But for that, there will be a high cost of the state. But if we have the incremental businesses, and as you know that the database, when it is increased to um, a certain degree, and there will be not enough space in your disk, or your I.O. bandwidth have some problems, so that you cannot resizing through your local host so that you need to rescheduling to migrate or auto scaling horizontally. So uh, under that circumstances, uh, we need to have such a betas and this and this image can show you and you can divide it into one or two or three or you can just simply migrate it on this platform and to combine it with Vitas. Another challenge is, just as I have mentioned, the database has states. It is stateful. So during your migration, uh, first, maybe there will be uh, some impact, but the impact would be little. First, you need to have, you need to build a replica on your host. And then, uh, but during this process, the data, uh, sometimes it may take several hours or it needs some configuration. So we need to optimize this process and we need to be very careful about it. So during our auto scaling, for example, this this container, my circle, if it does not have enough space, maybe you do not need to migrate it. Sometimes it is also available on your local host. So here, mainly, we can do these three things. First is migration, because sometimes when the database is too large, so we can split and merging about the host selection optimization and another aspect is addition or removal uh, other containers. So how to do it or whether to do it, how to migrate or which to migrate. So mainly we will take some three aspects into consideration. The first is it's, uh, how, where do you migrate it to? For example, the affinity and about your maximum value. Maybe you will have high resource cost adding your head, your headroom. And the second is the migration cost. 
and currently uh, we will take the uh, size of the data into consideration and the last point to make is after you migrate it we should also think about the objective host or the match between the resources so we will take these three aspects into consideration and to optimize the host selection whether to add or remove and how large was the size. Talking about the addition, this is another aspect for optimization and as you can see the equation on the slide. So during the migration of resources we have a metric that is a multi-resource balance because you want to avoid the physical serve of the avoid the situation that there is no space of the memory of the CPU. So you need to balance the multi-resource and balance the workload. So pr currently it is open source and you have the node, you put it on the container and it will be a, there will be a number. If you put this container on this physical host, uh, how much CPU has been left? For example, 20% CPU or 20% memory, and when they, and so that you get zero. When the first one CPU remaining fraction uh, minus memory remaining fraction, then it is zero. But it does not take the feature of the workload into consideration because. It is when you give 5% of CPU and 5% of memory remaining fraction. But however, the workload does not work like this because sometimes the memory may be 10% uh, of the memory and 5% of the CPU so that under such circumstances it does not work and that is why we come up with an optimization it is a very simple idea and it is a multi-resource at present we have CPU and memory and we regard them as some uh, factors the host to one when we have 70% CPU and 50% memory and the second is 40% CPU and 80% memory and we want to migrate the containers that we can realize 10% CPU and 18% memory and we will calculate it so traditionally maybe we can put it on host 1 uh, it will be better and it will be more balanced but our idea is that if the remaining fraction uh, can match the requested remaining fraction then it will be better what does mean by matching for example if we have 20% CPU and 40% memory, then it can completely match it. That is why we need to take these two factors, memory and CPU, into consideration and how similar they are, the similarity. So you can see the equation on the slide, and we need to evaluate the similarity between the request source and available resources. Even to three dimensional, four dimensional, then it can also work. So the cosine, if it is 1, then it means it is completely similar to each other. I mean, because these two are quite similar to each other, and uh, if sometimes uh, the CPU remaining fraction is large, sometimes the memory remaining fraction is uh, large. So this is according to the feature of the workload to schedule and to scale. And that is why we need to take the workload into consideration. And this is quite scalable. Uh, no matter its performance or its function, it can work quite well. So if it is good enough, then it, it is also uh, OK. And this is the result of the experimental evaluation. You can see our server, it is about 5,000 servers and we take 25,000 containers to schedule and then we compare the two results. If we cannot, uh, if we cannot schedule it anymore, that means uh, there might be some faults. And this is the current version, the K8S. And this is one, 
For hours, it can be 20%, and it, if it cannot be scheduled uh, anymore, we, but we can still uh, schedule about 20%. So th this is the results of the uh, 25,000 containers, about uh, that means the hours work better. And the second, the success rate. If the first is, has some faults, so our way is to schedule and until it cannot be scheduled anymore. About the 25,000 containers, uh, some will be failures, but some uh, can get success. Success, so you can see the success rate on the right side. So ex uh, in practice, I think this result is of great significance about 5% to 20% uh, improvement. So this is what we want to share. Like Kubernetes, because it is a common system, so you can adjust it according to your businesses and to optimize the system. Another, risk, another host selection, no matter migrate or scheduling, Another metric or standard is because Kubernetes, it has the load balance. And we will put these resources on the container to increase the resource availability. So at present, its algorithm is quite simple. Uh, that is, we should have the CPU fraction, the weighted sum of CPU and the weight sum of memory, the memory fraction. So this is quite similar to my previous idea, why we need to have the weighted sum of CPU or memory. If our application is uh, CPU intensive, so that we can give it a higher priority, but if it is memory, then we will give memory a higher priority. So we will consider, uh, they should be set up at the same level about the workload. And you can see the equations on the slide. So after a long time scheduling, because database is quite stable, and we will know that what kind of containers does it have. For example, the 16G or it account for 10%. And according to this, we can calculate out the CPU fraction and its proportion, the weighted sum of CPU of the total weight. Also, the weight sum of the memory, the memory fraction. So we will take these factors into consideration. And this is uh, one way for us to improve. Another aspect is an, another way of optimization. And you will consider uh, during your optimization or scheduling of the container, one fundamental thing is how to decide um, and the host with stable resource usage are more usable. Uh, so when you put it on the container, you do not know which can be improved, and it may be a flat line, so it is uh, predictable so that it can work better. And this can also be taken as a metric that is mad. The median absolute deviation, so we can calculate the MAD, so that to evaluate the resource usage of the dynamic system. And if the resources usage changes a lot, so that we can, uh, re uh, we can, we should not put more workloads on that, on that container. So this is another factor to consider. Another thing is about affinity analysis. Because database, it is no running and it does not change very frequently. So we can also uh, take affinity into consideration because if you put this on the physical host and how they can reach the maximum value at the same time, there is a simple way. Because if you already have a container to predict then it means it has high correlation and it can uh, calculate it through this uh, equation. And just now I already talked about the baseline. That is the foundation. So first how to size my circle and the idea 
is highly related to its uh, state. And the second, if you do not have enough space on the local host, how to migrate or how to schedule it and how to optimize it, we need to consider cost also. Uh, which, how to locate it. The second is about the size and the scale because it should be conducted step by step and at present it is just a small scale and we optimize the techniques that of optimization so K8S I've just mentioned and also the memory uh, including the disk but uh, for some things they are quite different Okay, why do we want to do that? Because we want to have the uh, deployment and the level of the Kubernetes and we want to have the strength of that to do the management resources. But since we started right early and the goal of that is actually the extended of the application of Kubernetes. And we want to isolate that Otherwise, the cost will be much more high, no matter for the VM or physical machine. So traditionally, the containerization is for the state, it's for state management. I, I can also answer another question. Sorry, can I hear that? Uh, we have a container and for the story aspect, if you use a position volume or a position volume, I'll briefly talk about that. For our team, uh, for all the containerization process, my circle is only uh, one aspect of it. We have other Magnus memories version and many other different uh, solutions. 
Yeah, for recent review, we just uh, have a database dark system. Well, for the database management, we use a disk. While well, for the second question, for the local volume process, and when you do the migration, and you have another problem for the data dynamic mode. So when you do the migration, do you need to? Do you need to take the storage content from one node to migrate to another node? Yes, we need to do that. Well, for this system, we can better support that. But theoretically, we also need to do that. And we'll have more discussion later. Because this is my limit for uh, four p.m. this afternoon. I have another talk on that. And we have uh, our talk that from a broader sense to introduce a thing to see progress or efforts in this aspect. As you mentioned in the story, actually we have a document support system. It's called the Truba SOS. It is the best database, uh, database conference that was adopted and it already been open source. Thank you.